In this video, I want to discuss how I passed my FAA Part 107 drone test and got a 93% score on it. I don't usually do this, but I'm going to use notes today because there's a lot of information to get through and I want you to benefit from it, so it's not going to be completely ad lib. Last February, I bought a Mavic Pro drone and started flying it as a hobby. The Mavic Pro quickly seduced me because of its capabilities to capture steady aerial video, and it has now become an integral part of my filmmaking. For example, driving down the road in my van isn't by itself very interesting. But when I shoot a little snippet from a bird's eye view, my video instantly becomes exponentially more interesting and captivating. Because I foresee myself using more and more drone shots in future videos, I decided to take the plunge, get my FAA Part 107 drone certification, which will allow me to fly drones legally on projects that generate income. In this video, I'd like to briefly discuss how I studied for the drone test and passed it with a 93% score. And I'd also like to share my personal notes with you about things that you can expect on the test, which will hopefully get you more prepared for the test. Spoiler alert, I took a paid online course. Here's how it all went down. First things first, the FAA Part 107 drone test is no joke. Prior to taking the test, I watched numerous YouTube videos where people claim that this is an easy thing to just wing, and that was not my experience at all. I can tell you with 100% certainty that if I just wung the test, I wouldn't have passed. And in order to take the test, you have to pay 150 bucks, and I just didn't want to risk paying that numerous times because that's a good chunk of change. The test covers things like sectional charts, i.e. maps that pilots follow, weather patterns, aeronautical safety procedures, FAA rules and regulations, airspace operations, and many other topics that quite frankly I knew nothing about. Initially I decided not to pay for any courses online because there's free FAA study materials available online. And I went ahead and I scheduled my $150 FAA test because I figured that would pressure me and inspire me to actually study for the test. And I scheduled the test about a month out, figuring that 30 days was plenty of time to study. Long story short, this plan proved to be disastrous. The FAA literature is hard to ingest, is overwhelming in its volume, I'm talking hundreds of pages of densely packed 10 point font, zero clear explanations about anything, and there's nobody around to ask specific questions. Plain and simple, I wanted to pull my hair out. Studying in this fashion just simply does not work for me. It's nearly impossible to cram information into my head just by reading very small text, you know, very monotone, government regulation style. I just didn't assimilate any of the, any of the stuff. Fact, after reading the FA study guides for several days, I found myself more confused than at the beginning when I knew nothing. My frustration led to procrastination and a week before my scheduled test, I hadn't accomplished anything. I made zero progress. So at that point, I decided to change my strategy and take an online course. A quick Google search helped me find Drone Pilot Ground School, one of the most reputable study courses online. I enrolled and it was the right decision for me. Over the next week, I studied for a total of 14 hours and 15 minutes. I kept meticulous track of how long it was taking me to study because I figured future drone test takers might find this information to be interesting. And then I scored a 93% on the FAA test, which basically means that I only got four questions out of 60 wrong. The test examiner in Bend, Oregon, where I took the test, later told me that my test was the highest she had seen to date. So, woo, woo, woo. Drone Pilot Ground School was a completely different experience. Unlike the FAA study guides, it was interesting and easy to understand. The course is administered in a series of videos that you can watch on your own time. You can watch all the videos at once or in chunks, which is ultimately what I chose to do. Basically, I spent a few days watching all of the videos in two hour snippets. On occasion, when I got confused and had specific questions, I'd send the creators of the course a email and they responded to me very promptly and very thoroughly, which was a huge bonus. When all was said and done, I was able to pass the FAA Part 107 drone test with relatively minimal effort. 14 hours and 15 minutes over the span of a few days really isn't impossible. It's, it's doable. Perhaps more importantly than actually passing the test is this. I now have a much better understanding of aeronautics and airspace as a whole. I am without a doubt a much better, more competent drone pilot now than prior to enrolling in Drone Pilot Ground School. I now understand how to read weather, how to calculate cloud bases, 
I know what it means when class E airspace pops up on my remote controller. And all of this feels really good because at the end of the day, if you take your profession seriously, you wanna be as safe and knowledgeable in your perspective field as you can be, right? Let's talk about cost. Drone Pilot Ground School is not a free course. It costs $299. This cost is good for five years. So basically on one payment, you can recertify two times. And if you don't pass the test, meaning you go through the course and fail the test, uh, Drone Pilot Ground School will actually pay for your retest. So that's kind of cool. The course fee, in my opinion, is worth it. Uh, because I plan to fly drones commercially, I treat fees such as this course as a business expense. So it's a write-off for me. Full disclosure, the creators of this course did not reach out to me for help plugging this course. It was actually the other way around. I took the course, was very satisfied with it, loved the results that it produced, and so I reached out to them and asked them if I could help plug it for them. And because I have a little bit of clout with folks on the internet, I was able to negotiate a $50 discount for my subscribers. So after watching this video, if you feel inspired to go and take this course, you can go to the link in the description of this video, sign up, enter coupon code SERGEY50, and save some dough. And that's basically it. That's how I studied for and passed the test. Before I go, I wanna give you a few personal notes. Uh, these are things that I made note of when taking the actual FAA test. Uh, and hopefully these will be very helpful for you if and when you go and take the test. Number one, I already mentioned this, but the test is no joke. It's kind of a hard test. Even though it is multiple choice, I wouldn't risk just winging it. That's 150 bucks that you're risking every time. I just don't think that's worth it. Take the time, study however you need to, whether it's you know with a free study guides or taking an online course, but do your due diligence and it's only gonna benefit you in the end because you're gonna get certified and you're gonna have better knowledge of everything and knowledge is good. Number two, the test was very hard to read from the computer screen. I don't know if this is FA specific or only localized to the region in which I took the test, but reading it off the old computer screen sucked. It was basically white letters on a bright blue background and I found it very hard to focus on the text. So just be prepared when you go to take the test that it might be difficult to read off the screen. Number three, FA test questions are often worded in a very tricky manner. So make sure that you read them numerous times because they do try and trick you and get you to choose the wrong answer. Tip number four is to bring a magnifying glass with you because things on the computer screen can be very difficult to see. I didn't do this because I have good vision. I don't wear glasses and I instantly regretted it because with the sectional charts specifically, there are little texts or icons that they want you to identify and it's just tiny on the screen and hard to see. So bring something to magnify the screen with. And I'm pretty sure that's allowed. I'm pretty sure they let you take a magnifying glass with you. Tip number five, make sure that you read sectional charts very carefully as oftentimes they have actual answers to the test question written on there. So for example, I remember a question where they wanted me to identify who I need to call to find out about parachuting operations in a specific area. And I was like, I didn't learn about this. Uh, but when you actually refer to the exact location on the sectional chart, you find the parachute icon right underneath it. It says contact so-and-so to find out about operations. So read sectional charts carefully. And finally, tip number six also has to do with sectional charts and it's pretty straightforward. Basically, they'll ask you from time to time, go to sectional chart 23, area two, and find airport such and such. Make sure you find the exact airport that they mention, because oftentimes it has, it's very far away from section two. So, you know, scour this sectional chart, find the exact airport that they mention, and then go off that because their little markers are neither here nor there. All right, good luck. I hope that you guys pass your test. And if you feel so inclined, subscribe to my channel, Butenko Films, for more videos that are just like this, but are totally different.